forgot all about that. Good AM Revolution, and welcome to the program where all the revolutionaries meet and talk, and happy Good Friday <laughs> for all of you who believe in Good Fridays. We believe every Friday is good because it's the end of the week, and we as working class people, if we're working on Friday, we get some time off, Rosanna. Hey, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, uh, Revolution. Thank you. And Scott and Michael and Anita. Good morning. Good morning, Revolution. Not all of us have the weekend off, Joe. A lot of a lot of people I know work on the weekend. So well, that's what I said. If you had a five day a week job, so right. you know, most of that goes mine. But you're right, you're right, you're absolutely right. Good morning, revolution to everybody. And Michael, I want to know something. I had a guy, a woman, a guy, I forget which, asked me a question. He said, how are you going to call your program Good Morning Revolution? Are you not in favor of violent overthrow of the United States government? How are you going to call yourself revolutionaries, Michael? Well, I think that we have to go back to um, our working class approach to revolution, right? If we went out on the streets and we got, I don't know, 200, 300, 400 workers together and we said, you want to pick up a gun right now and go overthrow Congress? They'd say, hell no, look at what happened on January 6th. I don't want to be one of those crazy people, you know? And so to expect that from um, workers is, is uh, I'd say, almost counter-revolutionary. You know, we have to meet workers where they're, not, where they're at and, you know, not where we want them to be. And of course, we want the most uh, peaceful uh, path to, to, to revolution, to socialism and so forth. And so, yes, we are revolutionary, um, but we're also materialists. We don't have some, you know, um, idealist concept about us having a Russian revolution of 1917 here in uh, 2021 USA. So. Well, son, I used to say to my mother, I would say, Mama, are you ready for the revolution? She's an old time communist. And she said, Joe, Joe, we should call me Joe. She said, you know, the two kinds of revolutions. She said, one is a spiral and the other is a circle going round and round and round. And I think you, you're in the circle and not in the spiral. What, what do you think? <laughs> well, yeah, I agree. I think, I think the, the concept of revolution has been, um, has been warped and misguiding and has misguided a lot of our, our activists or a lot of activists that they think that it has to be violent because that's the, those are the storylines that have been given to us. But a revolution doesn't have to be violent, it has to just be able to transform a society. So, you know, it can be peaceful. Let's, let's not fall into that trap of it has to be violent in order for it to be um, effective. In fact, uh, the most peaceful will be the most effective because that means that the, most, the majority of the people really want it and they have made it possible. Not by that's force, a but by point. will. Yes. Profound point. That's what that's what the the the, the, the Leninists, the revolutionaries, and the Third International said. Your revolution has to be supported by the majority of the people. Don't be coming in here trying to stage no coup. It's not going to work. <laughs> get get out. Hit the road, Jack, with that kind of nonsense. <laughs> One of the things I've been. I don't know, thinking about lately is that um, we think about a lot of these, these revolutions that ended up as socialist revolutions didn't necessarily start with like socialism as the main demand. It wasn't people coming together and saying, yes, we need to overthrow capitalism. We need to set up a worker state. It was um, people struggling for some um, advancement in democracy and realizing on a mass level in the process of that struggle that doing making that democratic advance required getting rid of capitalism. So the, the Russian revolution uh, started um, as you know, a, a democratic revolution and an attempt to get the, uh, Russia out of the war. Um, and it developed, the, the, the Soviets had been built and, and there was this you know, growing force for democracy that ended up being, you know, a socialist from same thing in Cuba. It started off as an anti-imperialist and democratic uh, revolution against the, the Batista government. And it became a socialist revolution when it became apparent that that was 
you know, what was necessary to advance and, and protect democracy. So I think that, you know, we, we have to be aware of, of the way that democratic struggles become socialist struggles when they reach a certain level. Well, I think we need to demand some better working conditions for you. You sitting out there in the woods with gloves on. <laughs> we need to, yeah. we need to get, 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 get him in a warm, in a warm room. <laughs> Look, uh, I want to say, I want to say, uh, take a moment uh, on a more serious note and note the passing, actually the murder of Marvin Scott. This brother was killed by the police in Texas. Another black man dead. He had. He had less than two ounces. He was arrested, uh, Anita, for less than two ounces of marijuana. And the cops, he, apparently he had some mental health issues. They took him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then they took him from the hospital and put him in jail. And they put a hood on his head. And next thing you know, the brother's dead, 23, 24 years old. Mm. And that Can you imagine? That that hood is what killed the the other um, an, another recent victim of police violence, and it just seems like they don't stop. Um, I heard one um, a person who had done a study who said that where there was a lot of um, uh, activity around the George Floyd murder, the um, the police changed their behavior somewhat. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case in Columbus, Ohio, where we had really strong, robust demonstrations after the George Floyd mur murder. And then in, in uh, December, uh, two black men unarmed were shot by police um, in, a, in a very brutal way. So it just seemed like there's no, there's no learning here going on. Black and brown people's life ain't worth, worth a good goddamn in Columbus. Mm -hmm. I just had a guy I grew up with. His name, his name was Ghost. We called him Ghost, Tony Ghost, Goins, Anthony Goins. He went to a shelter and they wouldn't let him in. And next day they found him um, dead, frozen to death. Oh no. In Columbus, mm. capital of the uh, uh, state. Have y'all been following the trial out there in, in Minnesota? I mean, uh, it's uh, harrowing listening to the uh, uh, testimony. They had an EMT uh, woman who was off duty walking by. Did you see that, Michael? EMT. And she saw the brother laying with the cop. And she said, let me help you. Mm -hmm. And they said, get out of my face. And, and uh, you want to help us get back on the sidewalk. You're a firefighter. She was a firefighter. She is a firefighter. A firefighter, and and they said well, the cop told her, uh, "Was it a chauvin, which is short for chauvinist?" Mm -hmm. Said, uh, "If you're really a fighter, fire, fire, firefighter, you wouldn't be interfering in our work. That's some dirty work that they're doing out there in Minnesota. I hope they lock all of them up. Me know, too. Forever. Me too." Lock them up and throw away the goddamn key. Mm -hmm. But can you can can you imagine a half two ounces of marijuana? Mm -hmm. Just legalize marijuana, uh, Scott, in your state, New York yeah. state. Other people are selling marijuana. Huh? I, I, I said say? some people are. It's a big business in some states selling marijuana, and you know, it's uh, yeah, John I, Boehner. I, John Boehner's in the business. <laughs> John Boehner, oh, oh, right geez. wing, son of a, <laughs> son of a, out of skunk, <laughs> John Boehner. Yeah, He's I mean, a piece of work. And lightning round, lightning round, all drugs should be legalized, all of them. Yes or no? Yes, I'd say yes. Scott, you hesitated, yes or no? Substance abuse is a medical problem, not a not a criminal justice problem. Mm -hmm. um, legalize it and provide people the the treatment and support that they that they're de or, yeah get it into um into the medical uh, realm rather than the criminal. 
Why is it every time I ask you a yes or no question, Scott, you got to give me a dissertation? Look, Michael, but there, there, there are no yes, or, yes and no questions, or very few yes, yes and, and no, no questions for My Marxism. answer was too short. <laughs> All drugs should be legalized. Yes, and I agree with uh, Scott and Anita. You have to help the people uh, who have issues with it. Yeah. Yes and no. All drugs should be legalized. I say yes, because it's not deterring any, any substance abuse. For once, all of these disagreeing communists agree on one issue. <laughs> Legalize all drugs. And yes, provide people with clean needles. Uh, but more yep. than that, we need a society that we can live in. Exactly. You know, and breathe in. Exactly. And, 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 and have a, uh, a, a decent job and a decent education and decent health care. You know, and if we have all of these things, Maybe people will still use, but they won't be compelled to use uh, be, because of the emotional uh, yeah. and social pain right. that they uh, deal with. You know, Marx called the suffering of, of sex, you know, the working social death. Hmm. Remember that, Anita? Social no, death. I don't think I know that phrase, it's but I, but it does remind concept. me. It does remind me of the the opium of, uh, of the masses that uh, Marx called religion. Well. Fentanyl today is the opiate of the masses, unfortunately, in Ohio. So, um, you know, people are in pain and they need that, they they crave that relief. It's uh, and, it really is a medical issue. And specifically on the, get a word the opiate, in? Huh? I say specifically in the, in the opiate uh, abuse crisis, it's part of the problem is that we have never invested in developing other ways to deal with pain on the one hand, and also that we have never recognized the fact that people are, are not just hurting you know, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, they're hurting physically, they're being used up by their jobs. You have people who are you know, 40 years old, 45 years old, whose knees are shot, whose back is shot, whose you know, ankles are shot because of, you know, because of work. And, and what, you know, what can you offer them? Um, capitalism has got to go. Right. So does uh, the background noise and uh, behind you start to need to mute because there's a lot of crunching oh, and rumbling in the background. And it might be. I know you think I'm picking on you, and I guess I am a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got ZZ Top glasses on this morning. <laughs> <laughs> we can't hear you. Speaking of jobs, Rosanna. The Biden administration has put forward a new infrastructure program that's going to be, according to what I was reading this morning, very beneficial to people of color and women, uh, black and brown women who are working in nursing homes. And I think one big section of that is going to be devoted to home care workers. Mm -hmm. That's why that's and, and I, I, I was saying last week, Rosanna, that for black and brown women, 30% live below the poverty line. And if you were to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, it would elevate almost a third of the population. That would be a powerful thing towards equality, don't you think? Yes, of course I do. I mean, just in the area I live, I live in, I, it's so clear you know, what's happened and, and, and how women bear the brunt of all of this. So I think, it, you know, it's a, it's a good move, but we have to guarantee that it actually passes the fight. You know, it's, it's good to propose, but uh, if we don't mobilize and stay uh, abreast of it, it, it can just, you know, vanish. So we have to as a people's movement have to make sure that it, it really does pass, provide the pressure, continue to, to uh, insist on these kinds of uh, measures on these kinds of uh, changes and so proposals and all that. So he can propose all of these things, but you know, we, we the people are the ones who have to make it happen. And we know that there's, you know, the fight is going to, the major fight will be in the Senate, mm -hmm. but um, we, have to, we have to keep pushing. Exactly. Biden, in fact, in, in that press conference last week, he said, 
uh, which of these things could we get through uh, the Senate? And he said, that really depends on the American people. I think he recognizes that you know, uh, there has to be that, that public pressure. But I just wanna say something about home attendance because I worked in the home care um, medical assistance program in New York City for about five years before I left New York. And home attendants really seriously need uh, to be organized and it's very difficult to organize them because they don't come into contact with each other in the normal course of their work. And I think it was um, Steve Knocke, our chair of the uh, uh, Labor Commission who was telling me that um, one thing that's being proposed is having a, an apprenticeship program for home care, uh, which will really go a long way to professionalize it and make services better. And it will just be a, a all around good for the home attendants to have that um, that union background and and uh, and platform. Very very true. And this and, and and according to what I'm reading, the unions are really pushing for this legislation. But Scott, I want to know how does this relate to socialism? I mean, y'all y'all supporting the Biden's infrastructure program, and and or does it relate to the ongoing fight for socialism? And then, Michael, it's, I'm coming at you next. So get ready. I mean, how, it, come it, on. It, it absolutely does. First of all, you know, as, as we mentioned earlier, um, the struggle for socialism starts with the struggle for democracy. It's, it's born out of it. We take something like the PRO Act, for example. That's going to, you know, make collective bargaining easier, bring wages up, but it's also going to democratize workplaces. It's going to give working class people uh, more experience in um in running uh, a workplace, uh, in working together, in, in um, you know acting collectively, that's going to get us further along the line. This infrastructure bill uh, is going to, um, you know, the that also is going to it's going to create jobs. It's going to be a huge victory when we get it for the working class. It's going to be a you know a rebuke to the uh, the neoliberal and, and um, conservative forces who, who've been on the kind of um, small government uh, mania for, for a few decades now. Um, you know, people are going to start seeing that the government is, you know, the, the kind of organ of the will of the people or should be. Like all of these things go into building the united movement of the working class and its allies that will get us to socialism. We can't do it any other way. It starts it starts with stuff like this. But Michael, is this a class struggle to raise, to, to raise the wages of women? Is that a class struggle? Like I, Bernie Sanders and them says, or is it a Democrat? Now Michael saying, I mean, Scott says it's a democratic struggle, but isn't it more a class struggle? I think it is intertwined because in order for this uh, bill, the infrastructure bill that Biden's proposing to be um, enacted, they're going to uh, tax the large corporations and the rich, which is something that you see the left out there marching about on a daily basis, tax the rich, eat the rich, all this stuff. And people who make, I believe, under $400,000 a year will be unaffected, right? So, you know, the working people won't be affected by this. And so I'd say, yes, it's a democratic struggle, but it's intertwined with the class struggle because this is, you know, ultimately weakening um, um, the rich. I, I heard a, a young comrade one time talking about non-reformist reforms meaning a reform that weakens the system rather than reinforces it. And this would be, you know, weakening um, the, the large corporations and the rich, you know, it's taking from them and, and giving to the poor. And so it's something that, you know, it's, it's under capitalism, it's a democratic struggle, but it is benefiting uh, people who are suffering, you know, the, the working class. And so we do have to support it, but always demand more. And, and Joe, non -reformist, I would say that the- uh... Non-reformist reform. What is that, Scott? Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say that um, when I say dem democratic struggle or struggle for democracy, uh, I consider, you know, the class struggle as part of that. The class struggle is also a struggle for democracy, the for the highest form of democracy. Um, so I, I don't I don't separate those, maybe in the way that some other uh, folks in the party tend to. Class struggle as the working class versus democratic struggle for. Um, the rights of women or African Americans or whatever. But isn't the working class multiracial and multinational and male it is, of and other genders? It is. And isn't um, there a racist and sexual social division of labor 
In other words, when I say social division of labor, I mean people are assigned different jobs or whether you have a job or not based on what, what color you are. Absolutely. Based on whether you're a man or a woman. But what I'm saying is that the class struggle is also a struggle for democracy. Um, simply that. Uh, but is that enough? No, not, not on its own. There are also these other um, struggle for uh, the equality of women, the equality of, of people of color, um, the struggle for the um, equality, liberation of LGBTQ people. All of those things are different fronts of, of this struggle for democracy. The class struggle, um, the closer we get to socialism will more and more become the, the central, the defining, the decisive front of that democratic struggle, but it's still, you know, it's within the, for me, within the struggle for democracy. I, I think it's That's important why, to always talk about how we're, we're fighting for political democracy to expand political, but also economic democracy, you know, means of production, workers controlling, you know, um, what, what the capitalists control right now, you know, the mines, the factories and, and so forth. And so it is political, it's a political, but it's also an economic struggle as well in those senses. Rashawn, if we don't put those two fights together, gender and race and class all at the same time, I don't think we're ever going to get to socialism. So, <laughs> well, I mean, they're all right around. Yes, everything is linked. Everything is linked, definitely. We're all linked together. Another, we don't take out. Go ahead, Anita. You can have can I add word. something to this? Because I heard some of the Republican arguments against the, the infrastructure bill. And they're saying, oh, corporations shouldn't have to pay for these infrastructure um, <laughs> improvements because it should be the users who, who pay. And by the users, they mean the individuals who, who might you know, buy gas or something like that. Well, well, it's the corporations, of course, that will benefit enormously and have benefited enormously from, uh, from infrastructure uh, improvements. Um, in, in Ohio, I, have I complained about this before? I pay $100 extra a year because I have a hybrid car. If I had a gas guzzler, I wouldn't have to pay that $100. Um, so in, in Ohio, you're punished for uh, you know, yeah. taking the green path. I don't think that would happen. There is a, a demand we can unite around. Uh, and you had the last word. Anita, Scott, Michael, Rosanna, have a great week. And we'll see you all next week where we discuss social revolution. It's a place where all the revolutionaries come to talk about and act. We do more than talk. That's right. <laughs> and that's what we're going to be doing. We got to take initiative, and we that's key to moving forward. So stay healthy, stay safe, stay in the fight. <laughs> take care. Bye, Have a everyone. great week, everybody. Bye bye. 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 bye.